outrage as Minneapolis allows amplified Muslim calls for prayer at any time. In a groundbreaking move, Minneapolis recently made history as the first major U.S. city to allow mosques to broadcast the amplified Muslim call to prayer or the azan at any time of day. This change, which took effect on April 19th, has been met with celebration from Muslim, Christian, and Jewish leaders alike. However, not everyone is on board with the new ordinance. The Freedom From Religion Foundation, or FFRF for short, is an organization for secular Americans, and they've criticized the decision as religiously slanted, arguing that it favors one religious group's message over others. Quote, allowing religious organizations a special carve out for Minneapolis's noise ordinance, which is a reasonable restriction meant to foster peace in a quiet community with a well-rested population, is the opposite of equal access, the FFRF said in its message regarding the noise ordinance. Despite the controversy, Muslim leaders remain open to addressing any noise complaints that might arise. So... This is really interesting because when you read news stories about this for most major publications, it talks about all these different religious leaders praising this as a really good move that Minneapolis did and it's time and we need to include people, blah, blah, blah. And then I would scroll through the comments and have overwhelmingly negative reactions from people presumably in the Minneapolis area commenting on this saying that they didn't appreciate this kind of thing. And I think, you know, so the argument from the progressive side is that this is inclusive and that this, and if there are church bells, then we should have the Azan. However, they're already, they already were allowed to broadcast the Azan, just not at certain times of day. So not before seven o'clock and not after 10 p.m. Now they are allowed to play the Azan as early as 3.30 in the morning. Amplified so loud that you can hear it as far as two blocks away. What? According to the news. What? According to reports that I have read, you can hear the Azan from this mosque at least two blocks away. And if I was a property owner in this area, I would be losing my mind. I have so many friends that live in Islamic countries where they live next to a mosque and they will send me videos of the Azan going out off right outside their bedroom window at the, you know, pitch black. I would be losing my mind. Armin, you know how I am when I am woken up unexpectedly. And Armin, it puts the fear of God into Armin. <laughs> <laughs> Susanna has never been a bigger bitch than when I get woken up and I and do not want to be woken up. <laughs> <laughs> so if I lived in this area and this was suddenly my life because they decided to just unilaterally sign this ordinance in instead of having voters like choose, I would be so pissed. And it's so... What frustrates me is that the the mayor signed this into law literally inside the mosque. So it like could not be more religiously slanted when you're literally signing it into law while seated inside of the mosque. I mean, like they do this all the time in Texas and churches and stuff, but it's not okay. They shouldn't. They shouldn't at all. And I think the Freedom From Religion Foundation makes a really good point when because the progressives are saying, okay, how is this different than church bells? If we have church bells, then we need to do this to be fair. But the Freedom From Religion Foundation is saying that there is a pre-existing noise ordinance that applied to all citizens that already existed. And you are not doing equal access by carving out an exception to the rule for one religious group and only because it is religious message. The carve out in the wording of this ordinance, change in the ordinance, literally says that it's for religious messaging, which inherently privileges religious messaging over non-religious messaging. And I read the letter that the, F the Freedom From Religion Foundation, their lawyer sent the city of Minneapolis. And in their letter, their legal counsel makes a very good point in saying that in the county where this mosque resides, there only 1% of the population is Muslim. 30% of the population in that same county is non-religiously affiliated, according to the most recent polling data. 
And so where are, if, if this is supposed to be inclusion, where is the representation for the 30% of the population of this county that is non-religious when the carve out specifically says that this is for religious messaging? Because if there was an atheist who started blasting music, maybe saying hail Satan or whatever, or anything, any non-religious messaging at 3.30 in the morning, they would have the cops called on them. So it's inherently privileging one message over another. I don't understand. Okay, so all of that being true, another question is, why? Are you trying to be hated? Like, is this... is? I, is a show of force and relevance so important that you were, are willing to make more people in the community be frustrated with Muslims just for the sake of getting this win? Because this is about a show of force, a show of power, a show of relevance. Is that really I, worth? I, I like people are going to hate explicitly you for this. Explicitly, that Armin. I I think that's why is it for them? I think it's uncharitable no, no. to say that it's. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Okay, sorry. I am not saying that. I am trying to figure this out. Okay. I'm saying I don't understand the point here. I'm going over the list of things that this could be about because. Why? What do you get out of this other than what I, I mean? I, I'm not saying you don't get anything out of this. I'm just trying to think about it. I'm saying like the main thing you're going to get out of this is frustration by non-Muslims. Isn't that what you're going to yeah. get? Yeah. Is is that what you want? I think so. I mean, wouldn't Muslim organizations' main purpose to be it would be to make Muslims have peaceful lives among non-Muslims? Isn't mm -hmm. this? I mean, I think. As, as big of a disservice this is to non-Muslims is more of a disservice to Muslims. Because mm -hmm. as a Muslim institution, my main goal would be to make Muslims accepted in a community. And this will make people frustrated. And, if, you know, as much as I'm sorry for the guy that is waking up at 3 a.m. because of the Adhan, I am more sorry for the Muslim having to live with the consequences of that with the backlash from that from from the hate that will come out of that this is anti this is an anti-muslim move in my opinion do you see what i'm saying i i do see what you're saying i do see what you're saying and i think so the whole idea is so in this particular um community there's a uh it's it's where a lot of the somali american community is um living and so the whole idea is supposed to, I guess, show them that they're welcome and included in this community and integrate them into the community, blah, 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 by facilitating this religious practice, right? But FFRF has a really, I want to directly quote the letter that their lawyer wrote to them, saying, it is worth noting that in our modern age of cell phones, alarm clocks, and all manner of digital devices, broadcasting a loud amplified message to an entire community in order to facilitate the religious practice of a select few members of that community is not only unnecessary, but unreasonable. Basically saying, we do not need the Azan to facilitate this religious practice. If there are members of the community that want to hear the Azan, the call to prayer to remind them to do Salah five times a day, they have more than enough available technological solutions to have that experience as that individual that they want. But it is unreasonable to carve out an exception to a noise ordinance that otherwise applies to all citizens so that a select few members of this county can have their religious practice facilitated. I think that is this unreasonable. Is not, yeah, this is not about reminding people to do this. Uh, like in this day and age, we have alarms, we have calendars. Maybe back, maybe before all this uh, all computers and internet and phone, maybe that was how people would be reminded. Now it's not, now it's not the main way. This is having that on plate at 3 a.m or 4 a.m in the morning is not about making sure people remember to do their prayers it's not about that okay it's about something else i'm not exactly sure what it's about okay because when it comes to making muslims accepted in a community this does the opposite okay so what is it about mm -hmm. it is a it might have it might be mostly leftists trying to in you know have a win 
have a legal win to show that they're I mean, like this is Minneapolis. For, they what? tried to abolish the police after George Floyd, right? And then the city council this, had to have so no, much I'm, personal security. They brought it all back. Or like, how did that go down? Like, come on. I think I was right then, Susie. You say it was unjustified. I think this is about a show of force. I think when you when I said this is about a show of force, you think this is unfair because you might think that I'm saying it's a show of force by Muslims. I think this is might be more of a show of force by progressives. True. Sh showing that they could push that they're like th that they they are being supporting minorities and stuff like that. Which, I I mean, if progressives are pushing for this, they're doing the opposite of what they're supposed to do. I agree. This is not. This is going. This is going to put Muslims in danger. This is going to make Muslims hated in the community. You're doing them a disservice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, I'm 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 okay with banning church bills if you want, uh, like if anyone wants to be more consistent. Okay. I saw some interesting arguments in the comment section of the Minnesotan Star Tribune that basically was saying they were arguing that church bells, while they are both religious in origin, church bells are inherently different because church bells are merely a sound that usually marks the hour or special occasions versus the azan is actively a religious proclamation that speaks to the detriment of other faiths. And that was an interesting okay. I hadn't thought about it like that before. I'm like, there is something different there. Oh, sorry. Let me turn this off. Um yeah, but to make that point seems like you're trying to come up with ways to support one religion over another. So I think the heck with it. Um either ban them all or at least say control the volume. Don't ban them. Just say this has the volume for all of them. This is the volume limit for all of them. And none of them should even dare thinking about doing that before, you know, 9 a.m. or something like that. Usually it used to be like 7. That. For everyone else, the rule seven. is 7 o'clock. So this for is this... privilege. This is Islamic privilege. This is, is Islamic privilege. Yeah. Nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So let's go read some of the other super chats. Uh, ES1000 said, imagine needing to wake up early and this blares. Yo, I would be losing my mind. I would be losing my mind. You want to see Susanna yeah. like a bat out of hell? <laughs> this is how to do it. Um, uh, Sasan is saying, is this defended by religious freedom legal rights in the United States? Personally, I think that there is a very good argument against this legally, but I'm no lawyer. And there might be people that try to defend this, but I don't know. I think the Freedom from oh, the I thought, Foundation you know, has some very good arguments against it. Darko go back to that. Go back. Oh. Wait, go back oh. to that. Wait, I, 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 just, I forgot to mention something. I was going to thank the Freedom from Religion Foundation for not holding back because this is Islam. Like, this is something that we need to be very grateful because, you know, a lot of other atheist organizations in the United States go after Christianity, but not after Islam. Freedom from Religion Foundation, which has a history of going after um, Christian institutions violating secularism, um, but also is not afraid to do that with Islam, which is very good. Like, guys, Freedom from Religion Foundation is very consistent when it comes to making sure that how they respond to these things. So I love thank them. They do great work. And Darko was saying, I just lost the comment, but he was saying, I wonder if this has had an impact on property prices, property values already. And yo, yeah, you want to get thing. change done in a city, you start getting property owners mad and things will start changing real quick. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Okay, and I don't know how to say this. Julia, Julia Bibb gave us 10 pounds, thank you, and saying, wouldn't this overexposure of religions in the West just lead to more tensions and far-right gains? It's kind of what we were talking about earlier. I can see how yep. this could backfire. Um, and Numan just gave us a little super chat, said, love you all. Thank you, Numan. It's good to see you. And and he also got five memberships for people. He bought five oh, wow. That's so generous. Yeah. Thank you, Numan. Yeah. Um, and Mustafa, I thought, had a really interesting comment because Mustafa is an ex-Muslim from Minnesota and is familiar with the community. Um, saying, I'm not going to lie, a lot of Minnesotans are frustrated with Muslims. The Somali community is so self-isolated and they do that on purpose. Saying, I would equate the self-isolation of the Somali community to that of the Amish or the Orthodox Jewish community. 
yeah, it's really, it's really interesting. I wonder, yeah, I wonder how that's going to pan out over time. Hmm. Um, cool. Should we well, move to you, the next segment? Okay. Wait, yeah. So, no, you, you have two more super chats. Oh, um, Erkin gave us a bunch of Turkish lira. Thank you. And saying it's intimidation as usual. I guess, Armin, the reason why I gave you pushback by saying that it's a show of force is that I think when you say that, it sounds like it's so intentionally coercive. And if it is yes, a show okay. of force, I do not think it is explicit. That's why I had a reaction yes. to that because it makes it seem yes. like Muslims are out there going, we're going to show them, blah, blah, blah. And I really don't think that that is the intention don't. behind that at all. But you're saying that this is the result of it. So I just wanted to like be more clear about mm -hmm. how we use that rhetoric. That it's good that you're very careful about that because we don't want to come and do a uh, creeping sherry, uh, free uh, yeah. fear mongering tactic. Yes, you're right. That's a very good point. Okay. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art. <laughs> 